shut up in my bones. Hey, Lord, have your way. Stir up my soul. And hey, Lord, have your way. Like a mighty storm, stir up my soul. And hey, Lord, have your way. It's a prayer, my son. It's a personal prayer. Like a rushing wind, Jesus, breathe.
for love. I was made for love. I was made for loving you. Where is your heart this morning? I was made for love. Yes. I was made for love. Today is the day of intimacy. Say, I was made. I was made for love. I was made.
is what we've come to do. Lift those hands, let him see them. Lift those hands and your heart, let him see them. And begin to tell him that you've come for him alone. And you worship him. We have risen. We have risen this morning to come and worship him. Hey, we will rise, we will rise in your name. Adonai. You reign on earth. And yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Amen. And yours is the kingdom, and yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Say yours is the
we lift our hands in the presence of the Lord. I want you to speak to God the way you understand Him, the way He is ministering in your life. If you can speak in other tongues, I want you to take this moment and just go before God. We adore you, Lord, this morning, yes. King of kings and Lord of lords, great and awesome God. There is no God but you. No one can be compared to you, our God. No one can be compared to you, our Father. We thank you this morning. We thank you for the transformation that, Lord, you have caused in our lives. We thank you this very day that, Lord, we are the children of the Most High God. We thank you, Lord, that we are bought by the blood. We are bought by the blood of Jesus. We thank you this very day, Lord my God, that Jesus rules and reigns in our lives. We bless you this morning in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no God but you. No one can be compared to you. We are satisfied in your presence. We are fulfilled in your presence. We are completed in your presence. We are made alive in your presence. We bless you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for the angels that take care of us. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness that follows us wherever we go. Your goodness and mercy pursues us. And Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. In a time and a moment like this, we thank you that we are still alive. We are spiritually alive. We are physically alive. We are mentally alive. We bless your name, oh God. This morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, our hearts are full, Lord, oh God, of appreciation. Our hearts are full of a song of praise, the song to worship you, the song to adore you, the song to lift your name on high. In Jesus' name, we bless you. We put our hands together for Jesus. I said we put our hands together for Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. How many appreciate God that they are here? How many appreciate God for what He is doing in their lives? How many appreciate God that? That it is well in their spirits. It is well in their bodies. It is well in their minds. How many appreciate God for that? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. How many cannot even be able to describe how they made it? And, and they are surprised. You know, sometimes you are supposed to be surprised by yourself. Mobile when we are Zazi. Hallelujah. I I love this song by Travis Green. He made a way. I don't know how, but he made a way. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes you you look at the walls that you have to, to, to go through. You don't know how. You don't know how you have managed to send your children to school year after year time and again you don't know I, I'm surprised of people who are in the presence of the Lord and as if you know God is wasting their time some of us when we look at God we don't know how But all I can say is that I'm grateful. How many are here today and we can just do that song for a minute? And I want you to sing it from your heart and say, Lord, you have made it. <laughs> Some of you, the day you get to appreciate God, I know now you complain about the husband you have. With Galamali, Galandevo, hey. 
one day when you will get a revelation you realize you go before God and say but God I'm grateful I'm grateful of the life that I have some of you you have you you have a life that I I think wa ngama police akula abantu abakudingayo you you just have a clean life a life that you are not even ashamed when your name is called among other people. Uh, you, 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 you might not have all the money that others have, but you have that life that is clean. That you don't have to wait to till ngali chone ukuthi uhambe emnyameni uyahamba nje mini ungela qala. You don't know what I'm talking about. There are people who they struggle in the inside of them. Sometimes when they see two people talking they think they are talking about them because they know what they did in the dark. Oh Lord. Just want to raise our hands. Just say to God you made a way. You made a way. Don't know how but you did it. Don't know how, but I'm grateful. You made it. Don't know how, but you did it. in your spirit that you can begin to sing prophetically. You look at your situation. Ah, listen, 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 listen to me, listen to me. Moses did not say the Egyptians that you see today, you see them no more when the Egyptian had sunk in the sea. He said it before the Egyptians had sunk in the sea. He said the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them no more forever. Be before uh, the Egyptians were still pursuing them, the Egyptians were still coming, the dust that they were raising, that they are coming with their chariots, with their armory, and Moses, but he says the Egyptians that you see today, you see them no more forever. So I want you to see yourself out of that cocoon that has imprisoned your life. And you, I want you to picture yourself on the other side of the sea. And you look back and you can't see the Egyptians. Did you hear what I said? So when we sing this song, I want you to see yourself out. You might be in two billion dead right now. But I want you to say to God, I don't know how you did it. But you made a way. You might be 48 years and not married. But you see yourself more married in six months time. And you say, I don't know how you did it. Please can you raise that song? You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power. You perform me.
our hands together for Jesus. Can we bless the Lord in this place? Can we bless the Lord in the house? Can we bless the Lord in this house? I can't hear you celebrate God in this place. Celebrate God in this house. Can I hear some celebration in this place? Can I hear somebody shout Jesus? Can I hear somebody shout Holy Ghost? Can I hear somebody shout Jibarakatala Lamade? Can I hear somebody shout the power of God? Can I hear somebody shout the glory of God? Can I hear somebody shout in this place? The glory of the Lord is in this house. The power of the Lord is in this place. Can I hear somebody shout the power of God in this place? Can I hear somebody shout the glory of the Lord in this place? In the name of Jesus, can we lift God in this house? In a mighty way, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 given a name that is above every name that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord I want to say to somebody today Jesus is the difference in your life I want to say to somebody today Jesus makes a way where there seem to be no way I want to say to somebody today Jesus is our healer Jesus is our healer Jesus Jesus is our counselor hey Hallelujah. Greetings to everyone in this house in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are standing next to somebody or sitting next to somebody, can you give them a high five? If they look sick, lay them hands and say, In the name of Jesus, arise. Hallelujah. Lay them hands. Don't wait for anyone. If they look sad, give them a clap. In the name of Jesus Christ. Something in their lives. In the name of Hallelujah. I greet those who are watching us online in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are in this place to worship and to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we get into the word of the Lord, I sense I must do some declarations here. How many, how many know that this is our season? How many know that we are in the season of shift? How many know that we are in the season of divine shift? Hallelujah. I decree and I declare to everyone who is connected to the grace of the heart are physically here and those who are watching us online I decree and I declare this is your season for the manifestation of the greatness of God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ there is a shift coming your way in Jesus name hallelujah I come and it's all forces and powers that try to delay and deny your season of manifestation I scatter them in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare it's your season of manifestation. Wherever you are, whatever field you are in, you must know this is your season. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is your season in the realm of the spirit. It is your season in the realm of the natural. It is your season in the realm of the physical. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the for for I know. Fire. I know the world. I have come here to announce a new season in your life. If you hear me, you say yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ah, Shabada. It's your sign, it's your time to shine again. It's your time to shine again. In whatever field you are, 
It's you are la mayakacha. You are the man of the moment. You are the woman of the moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. No one can resist you because God has appointed you. No one can stop you because God has set you. Hallelujah. To God in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree supernatural speed to your season. You shall not be delayed. You shall not be denied. I come against the spirit of delay. I shall speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you are doing, you receive good speed. You receive regular speed in the name of Jesus. If you fight people and say, this is my way. This is mine. This is my declaration. The Lord is talking to me. I am the man that the Lord I am the woman that I am the one. I am the one. Hallelujah. Yeah. To all the sons of the house who play soccer, it's your season. Yeah. It's your season. You cannot you are unstoppable. If you score, you score. Yeah. To all the sons and daughters of the house who are in business, it's your season. Yeah. It's up left, right, center. You are unstoppable. You are not You whatever. It's your that is at you. Business is a spiritual activity. Sons and daughters who are in ministry, it's your season. I release again the mantle of prayer. You shall begin to pray prophetically. You shall begin to decree things prophetically. You are will be saved this year. You will receive Jesus this year. I decree to all the daughters who are single and are of marriage age. It's your time to get married. Go and see your in-law. Go and encounter your man. Go and encounter your woman. It's your decision. You just have to flourish in the name of Jesus. You did not hear what I said. I said it's your season. I don't know what you do, but it's your season. All my sons and daughters who are employed, your employer has no choice but to promote you. He has no choice but to give you a raise. It's your season. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You did not hear what I said. I said it's your season. Hallelujah. It's your I am a yakaja. I, I cannot say it's your season. When our million is go, it's time to dance around and begin to chop people. Hey! It's time to jump up and about. It's time to run up and about. And I have to tell them, it's my season. I was silent all along. I was quiet all along. I was fighting all along. But the better I am starting a new season. I Carrying a new season. El Yakata. Ah, we went through the fire. We went through the water. You caused people to walk off our head. But you I want to decree to somebody else. They said, hey. How many hear what I'm talking about? You should be speaking in tongues already. There is a turnaround that is taking place. Today, I come against every evil cycle in your life. I break the cycle in the name of Jesus Christ. You suffer. You want to win. You are not early, my. You are not going to celebrate. You are not You are believe. You are not going to be You are going to be healthy. I decree in the name of Jesus that there is a shift. To all my sons and daughters who are in the cocoon, the cocoon of prison, the cocoon of Cornwall. You try this, it's not working. You try this business, it cannot work. I come today with the authority upon I cocoon. I say, You come out of this. You want you walk out that situation in the name of Jesus. It's grace of life. Grace to prepare. Give your neighbor a high five and say, I'm moving forward. Give another one and say, I'm moving upward. Give another one and say, greet me while you can. Because I'm shifting. I'm 
shifting my eye. I can sense there is a change in the realm of the spirit. I sense an abundance of rain. I hear a sound. A sound. Me while it's you can. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, especially your best friend if you have one. And say, I love you, the love of the Father. But I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. There's something happening in the realm of the Spirit. And I believe that's my name. I don't know who you used to pray with, but I hear a sound. There's something taking place in the realm of the Spirit. There is a shifting in the realm of the spirit. I am I. Can we get into the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm going to speak on something that is called divine shift three. Ayabaya. Hallelujah. Divine shift three. Hallelujah. We're going to start the life of Joseph. And we close church. Hallelujah. So we will, we will dance around Genesis 37 up to about 46. If the Lord allows us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the shift that, that we sense. Thank you for the change. Something is happening in our lives. Thank you for this divine shift. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do a case study on Joseph this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My God. This is the story of a man who rose from life in prison meant to the palace in hours. Without a helper, without a relative, without connection, there was a divine shift that took him from life imprisonment into a palace within hours. Ah, you need, you need, you need, you need, you need to hear this in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare over somebody's life. Your life will be beyond the scientific calculator. Why is they say, hey, your brother, your brother, it took them 50 years to buy a house. I decree and I declare. Everyone in this house, hallelujah, who is below 25 years, go and buy your house. I give you the grace for it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you are above 30, buy three. So look at your neighbor and tell them, me now just say, I'm at three houses. I decree that grace over your life. Things will turn around in a twinkling of an eye. The Bible, uh, rapture speed uh, means that things happen in a twinkling of an eye. The Bible says when rapture shall happen, the, the trumpet shall sound in a twinkling of an eye will be caught up. I decree and I declare over your life, may things just happen in a twinkling of an eye. When you think may it be delivered, when you think may it come your way, in the speed of life, I decree and I declare, hallelujah. Joseph, just say Joseph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The way, the, the, the name Joseph means the one who carries more than one. Or the one who carries more. Joseph means more are coming. So when you see me arrive, don't think I'm alone. <laughs> Let me leave you alone. You are too, <laughs> you are too spiritual to hear that today. Everything about your life from today, hallelujah, may it take the Joseph uh, unction and anointing in Jesus name he was in a foreign land he was a stranger but God lifted him up from the dungeon of prison into the soft life of a palace same day I decree today upon your life you will be a story that people will be asking themselves is she not the one is he not the one ay 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 they know you about yesterday, but they don't know you when God causes a shift and a turn around in your life in the name of Jesus. Genesis 37, verse 1 and 2. Hallelujah. The book.
Book of Genesis chapter number 37. Yes. Verse number one and verse number two. Yes. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. Ah. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock. Stop it there. This is the way. I love the way. This is the way you find me. I love the way you find me. This is the way. I love the way you find me. This is the way you find me. I love the way. This is the way you find me. I love the way. Something is falling in this place. This is the way you find me. I love the way you find me. This is the way you find me. I love the way. Just keep playing it. Your will be done. Shabbat Yikai. Verse 1 and 2. Can you read for me there? I'll stay there for about five minutes. Verse 1 and verse number 2. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old. Hallelujah. You see, Joseph was a boy of shifts. He was a boy. He was a breaker of cycles. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Joseph's secret is that he was connected to his father. So, the Bible, the Holy Spirit left this unedited in the Bible. He left broken English in the Bible. The Bible says this is the genealogy of Jack according to the cycle. It was supposed then to say so and so because so and so and so and so because so and so. But because there was a new season that was about to happen, when they were writing, they say, this is the genealogy of Jacob. And then the next sentence say, Joseph. So, which means there is something that was written, but it had to be excluded. Because something important needed to be said. Because, my Andakaya, you are supposed to understand that genealogy of Jacob was supposed to say his firstborn was Reuben. It was supposed to talk about Simeon, Dan, and Judah, and the like. Naphtal. But all those guys, they were summarized in Joseph. This is the genealogy of Jacob, Joseph. Why? I want you to understand this. Because if they had to continue, it was going to be clear to all that Joseph received the blessings that were not supposed to be his.
I know you don't understand. Reuben, the Reuben generation, there are so many people who don't understand the most important thing is your spiritual inheritance. So, Joseph, come, okay, let me help you and just go through this so that at the end I can just flow. You'll understand when I, why Joseph had to suffer. So, point number, you're supposed to understand that when they say the genealogy of Jacob, Joseph, you're supposed to understand that. So, Joseph had broken the protocol. But he did not only break the protocol. Reuben was careless. Because Reuben, in his DNA, he was wired to ascend. But he only ascended to the top of the bed of his father. So, that's, he lost everything there. Many people, when we talk about holiness, they think that it's a small issue. It's serious. Let me talk about, let me tell you. When it comes to sin, it's not the issue of being forgiven. It's the issue of what we have lost. It's opportunity because boys, you can't have two. To be forgiven, you are going to be forgiven because God is a forgiving God. What Reuben didn't understand is that what he was doing, he was throwing away his level of being a patriarch for the ascension of his father's bed. If you didn't understand that Reuben was actually replaced by Joseph, this is the reason why Joseph was tempted by the same temptation that tempted Reuben. When Joseph was adopted or bought by, by, by Potiphar, because he was less than 30 years, he became like Potiphar's son. So he could as, he could as well like Reuben slept with his father's wife. But for him to take what Reuben failed to take, he had to pass what Reuben failed to pass. So this is the reason. You don't understand. It wasn't just because uh, <laughs> there was a lot at stake. This is the reason why Joseph was not ordained, my God, at 17 years. Because he had not passed the examination that made him to be able to be ordained. The, the problem, many people, they, let me talk, talk to you, hallelujah. When you read about grace in the Bible, it's not the issue of Samson and Delilah. That's not grace. That one is called a disaster. When we talk about grace, it's the issue of Mrs. Potiphar and Joseph. That's where you see grace. Because Joseph was fighting what his brother failed. So don't tell me that you're going to take this city when other men of God failed in certain areas and they failed to take the city. If you want to take over this city, you're supposed to pass the test they failed to pass. When all men of God are becoming jolo guys, you're supposed to understand. You're supposed to pass that test for you to be at the top. So when it comes to sin, the issue is not being forgiven. Is what you had to lose for you to be there. Joseph was, uh, Reuben was supposed to ascend to the throne of rulership. He only ascended to the level of the bed of his father, which was less than one, one meter. This is the reason why your prayers, they cannot go above one meter. What have you swallowed? Your voice cannot ascend. There are some people, you hear their voice, you know, this guy is so gifted and talented, but they, can, they, are, no long, they are not able to sing beyond their location. So, I want you to understand, when you make up your mind,
you would have become Mrs. Potiphar's best boy instead of being the president, sorry, the prime minister of the nation. What have you lost? Yes, you got a promotion at work, but at what cost? Now, let me talk aside. Let me talk shift. I pray you hear me today. Amen. I come against the spirit of Ruben. Amen. The spirit of people. Do you know many people, they, they take things of God secondary. That's why if I upon them. Where you value sleeping with a maid more than the value of being patriarch. You can never take over where you have not conquered. <laughs> Let's go, Joseph. Now I'm first. That one I needed to explain so that you understand why you are failing to ascend. Can I tell you this one thing if you didn't know? The devil does not fight anyone who doesn't have a star. In the realm of the spirit, there are stars that are upon you. That's why the devil is coming after you. Never think that Joseph was, <laughs> Reuben was the most handsome. But in hope, ah, no, you know what? I last. Can I ask you, why do they call you my nini where you are coming from? Some people, they lost God because of money. You had to lie to get that tender. The loss is what matters. Not the forgiveness. How much have you lost? Some people you are supposed to be saviors of your families. Now because you have loved the world like Demas, you have lost more than what can be paid through money. Let me run. Let's go. Let's read number there's too much to read to just jump. Let's read number. Oh, yeah, by the Chapter 3. Sorry, verse 3. Chapter 1, verse 3. I'll just rush through. Verse 3. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Sorry, not chapter 1, chapter 37, verse 3. Chapter number 37, verse number 3. Yes. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. D d uh, okay, we'll deal with this on Monday, on, on Tuesday, on Friday. Eh? Do you see the shift? All along we're talking about Jacob. The Bible was saying Jacob, this is the genealogy of Jacob, Joseph. Then in, with the, now it's Israel. No, you will not understand. Just read. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the So son. Joseph was not loved by Jacob. Because Jacob is when he was still a frowster. It, it is in two, two verses. We say this is the genealogy of Jacob. But the Bible leaves that says now Israel. Who loves you? Is it Israel or is Jacob? Because it's different. Israel is the converted Jacob. Israel is the one who is not fighting for his brother's inheritance. Friday. 
because he was the son of his old age uh, and he made him a coat of many colors all right so jacob has two fathers sorry joseph has two fathers jacob and israel there is nothing as painful as having a parent or a person or a friend who's who is two in one one day they are carnal the other day they are spiritual you find them in carnal things they are strange there you find them in spiritual things they are strange who are you exactly i pray today may the jacob in you die may the jacob around your life perish say that you can receive something so he received a mental thank god he wasn't given a mental by jacob he was given a mental by israel it matter it matters where you got your mental because mentors are given by fathers but it matters who is your father who do you preach like who do you walk like If you did it no there are some people who say oh my mother also lies she is a jacob and an israel in one Today I pray that the jacob in you must die May Israel arise Israel means the father of many nations Israel means you become a patriarch. You are supposed to understand why Jacob had to die because Jacob was not born a patriarch. Jacob was born Jacob, but he also also was like a Reuben. He played with his part. So Jacob had to take over somebody's issues. So you think World Wide International is the first church? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, you're going to greet verse 8. 5 to 8, he's talking about his first dream. Okay? This is where you saw him and his brothers, they were tying sheaves. Okay? And his sheaf stood up. And the others they bowed to his. Okay. You, this is now the problem with many people. When when you have an anointing upon your life. Did you hear me? When you get a revelation of how great you are, it is not for an announcement. It's for you to go for prayer. So he's given the first one the second one is given where the moon the sun the moon and the 11 stars they bow to him This one he tells his brothers and he tells his parents If you read the first one the brothers could even interpret it So for you to be a dream interpreter for whatever it, it, it doesn't make you spiritual So they had to interpret it and they were correct. But it made them angry. He goes, he makes another one, he makes the same mistake. They are also to the pit, from the pit to the Amalekites, from the Amalekites to Fa- to Potiphar. from Potiphar to prison why i'm here to talk to everyone who is anointed here you have been given a jacket that is different from everyone else it's not for you to go around boasting that you have the thing can i talk even to churches we are not here to be the best church we are here to do business it's childishness to go around saying we are the biggest church we are the best church we are whatever it will send problems to you Because God has not anointed you to compete with anyone. 
God has anointed you to fulfill your life assignment. If your life assignment means that a million people will be saved, that's your life assignment. You don't have to go around and say, I am the watch, I am the watch. No. The time you are wasting talking to people, you are supposed to be talking to God who has given you that dream. The problem with people, God gives you a dream, you leave God, you start talking to people. So this triggered a, a season of suffering. And that season of suffering was building four things. I'm about to close. One, it was building a testimony, which is called the personal gospel. And your testimony is not that uh, we met at church and we prayed and fire came down. Your testimony is on my way to Damascus. I saw the Lord. Because your testimony is necessary. Because uh, there are some people who will not believe the God in your Bible. They will believe the God in your life. Nebuchadnezzar did not believe Oh, Daniel, because they said, we are, the, we are the children of Israel. Hey, we have the Ten Commandments. He didn't believe them. He actually took Shadrach, Mishael, and Abednego and threw them in fire. You understand? For not bowing to his idol that he had created. But when they were in fire, the Bible says the fourth man appeared. And the fire had no power over their lives. And even smoke could not hold onto their clothes. And the Nebuchadnezzar changed the story because of their testimony. So when you, when you were going through what you were going through, it was only creating a testimony, not killing your life. Guys, sound, make sure I don't pull myself back. Hallelujah. You can raise my treble or whatever. Listen, whatever you went through, no one else can speak your testimony. The problem with many people when they go through fire, they deny God. This means you will have denied your testimony that you were supposed to use. Point number two, it was the test of his consecration. What is called in English quality control. The life of every believer must be tested its quality. We can't test your quality when everything is honey and milk. We test your quality when God is silent but you are burning. That's when we know what those are in slam, but those are in tongue. Do you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a test whether you love God more than you love your life. They are dangerous demons in the corridor of power and success. If we, if you are not trained enough, you're gonna be worse than Satan in those corridors. They are people who stepped into success without having been tested. They lost to God. But you are supposed to go through that test so that when we do our quality control in the realm of the spirit, we look at you and say, this man can make it anyway. I am, I am. Can you imagine if Jacob, sorry, if Joseph had not passed the quality control, hallelujah, of knowing that his zip must be up. Let's go into the word. Sell a power. If you can cheat as a slave, then we give you power as a king. Some of you here say, hey, I'm holy, I'm what? It's because we haven't been given power. Where you decide who dies and lives. Where you decide who can be promoted or demoted. When 
when you arrive, everyone say, Makadi Chef, Makadi Chef, hi, boss, how are you? You arrive. Whether on that day you did bath or not, no, it doesn't change anything. Your arrival. They are demons there. My God, my God, my God. They are demons in serious business that they will need you to have passed the quality control in the spirit for you to raise. It's not about the pit. No, it's test. It's not about Potiphar. It's a test. We are just testing you. But because, you see, until the day you die to self, you can't save God. You are pretending. That's why you find heaven can't promote you. Because they tried. They realized it doesn't work. So now they don't promote people. Without them having passed, passed the quality control in the realm of the spirit. Oh, should I stop here or should I continue? Hallelujah. You cannot be given authority over nations when you can't rule your tongue. You lie like water. You then sing like a bird. The Bible says you are like the devil. Your father, who was a liar from the beginning. No one doesn't have a father. Hallelujah. We can't give you to have authority over nations when you cannot account for each change here, $10 or anywhere. You are given to go and buy bread for $1.50. And you can't account for change. And you want to be in control of nations. You still, you lie to your husband that the dress you bought is for 200 when it was for 75 because you needed the other $100. And you are praying that we are taking... You must pass the quality control. Hallelujah. Can you imagine with the anger you have? With the anger and the hatred and the unforgiving spirit you have. Then we give you authority to rule. You kill everyone. So you are being tested with your children. How, how you behave to your husband. How you behave with your wife. It's a test. I mean, you didn't know that marriage was not. Uh, <laughs> it's a test ground. It's the only thing that tests your patience. Is the only thing that qualifies to test your forgiveness. Don't lie to people that you can forgive until you get married. I'm speaking as a man who has been married for 27 years. It's the only thing that tests you everything. Will you tell the truth that you spent the $500 where? It's on marriage. Or you come up with receipts that don't exist. It's in marriage where you are supposed to know that you are accountable. You are supposed to go to somebody and say, when you are going out, I'm going out. go hide. For no reason. For no reason, you just tell them that a city home. For no reason. It's just testing you. Quality control. That's why even the Bible says, if you are church, you are right in Kai. It's quality control. That's why I find the easiest thing is to divorce. I've heard people who say, ah, I can't live with this. So you think God was crazy when he brought you there. He just wanted to test you where he wants to take you. That's why God says, that's why God says, husband, you love your wives. Not, not, not as your father. As Christ loved the church. So your standard is Christ. And he says, you love that person. Do you know? Can I speak? Women are the amazing people. They can cry when they are happy. They can cry when they are sad. So you are supposed to know that this cry is for sad. This cry. When you hear your wife say you can go, it doesn't mean that every day. Wait and understand. So God says we love them. Because 
because it's a training ground. Now, people are quiet. It's me at my age, I'm allowed to speak this. Hallelujah. Amen. Who can love somebody who will leave their socks in the kitchen? But the Bible says, you. Hey. Mothers are not even happy now. They, 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 they say, Apostle, what, what, I, what I try to say. I'm not saying anything. I'm just repeating what the Bible says. Hallelujah. How, 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 how do I submit? Huh? How, how do I submit to someone who doesn't understand? You see, you are blessed if you have an understanding man. But most of those I know, they don't. But God said, you submit. It's a training ground. God, he never said submit to an understanding man. Can I talk to mothers who are here and your husbands are here to be saved? The Bible, the Bible says your own husband. If you are able to submit to your boss, don't tell me that you can't submit to your husband. Even if he comes and vomits, kachasu, plus zambezi, plus masese in the house, you submit. It's not me. Let's rewrite the Bible. And we can't. Because it was written by the Holy Ghost. It's, the day you take it as ministry, you'll be okay. You have no problem. But if you take it as if... Never say it, I didn't tell you. I'm telling you. Give your neighbor a high five. If you are sitting next to your wife, give her a kiss. It's allowed. Just tell her, I know, I'll submit. Tell the men I'll submit. Tell the, the wife that I'll love you. Uh, yes, I thank you for that amen from the back. It's the school of life. You are Joseph, you are going higher. You are supposed to do greater things. But if you fail on this morning, and a thing, just failing to submit to one person, failing to love one, no. I can't do that. When I'm supposed to lead nations, I'll love one person. I'm still, I'm still waiting for an amen choir. God never said love two. He said one, your own wife. Your own one. Look at your neighbor and say, it's one. So that's what, point number three. Oh, I think I'll just, uh, I'll end on this one. Point number three. Why Joseph was going through all those challenges he went through, point number three, it was to mature him into sonship. Sonship is when you are like your father. Hallelujah. Joseph, okay, let me give you, jo Joseph, okay, let me start by saying, in Israel, you were not a man until you are 30. You will not go to war you'll, until you are 30 years. But Joseph had dreams when he was 17. So that shows you that he was never supposed to take over at that time. He was supposed to grow into the image of his father. So that delay that was taking place in the train, that was, it was to mature him. Because he was not able to stand before Pharaoh before he was 30. If you read the Bible, it says he was 30 when he stood before Pharaoh. You go into the word, you discover that Jesus, he started talking at 12. He was already talking with the priest and whatever, but he never started ministry before he was 30. Okay, you don't know Jesus. There is a man called David. He killed Goliath when he was 17 years, but he only became king when he was 30. So there are revelations that God can give you when you are 17 years. It doesn't mean that at that problem, moment then we call you an apostle. You are still growing. So this is the reason God has got to take you through trouble so that he may grow you. 
So Joseph, at, at 17, he's already, he's already dreaming at 17. I want you to understand now. Understand now I'm preaching. At 17, Joseph was only a dreamer. But Pharaoh didn't need a dreamer. At 28, Joseph was a dreamer plus a dream interpreter. But Pharaoh didn't need a dream interpreter only. It was only at 30 where Joseph was a dreamer, a dream interpreter, and a solution provider. The world there, they don't need a dreamer. Where you are going, they don't need somebody to interpret tongues. They need someone who has solutions. So you get a solution you cannot be enthroned because what enthrones you is not how much you talk but the strategies that you bring we have a lot of people they preach a lot they pray a lot and they think they can do things no you are not there as yet are you a dreamer yes you pick dreams you can see in the realm of the spirit ah i saw you yesterday at the market it doesn't mean that you are enthroned because there are a lot of dreamers who cannot pass mrs potiphar You will not be able to interpret dreams before you pass Mrs. Potiphar. So he's going to prison. He has nothing to go to prison. But it was a place where you can meet people who have dreamt what they cannot interpret. So he prison was a dream interpretation school. Okay. I think I'll ask for a conference. Your problem is not to understand yourself where you are because every stage of your life has a meaning. You think you are just living. There is a meaning where you are. Those days you are broke and you cannot even raise money to go to church. There is a reason you are supposed to understand what you are supposed to learn at that time. Because whatever you learn at that time will sustain you when you have billions in your account. We now conclude. Look at your neighbor and say, I know know you preach. I know you're a dreamer. But can you interpret them now? Go to the other. I know now you can even interpret dreams. He interpreted the baker and the buckler's dream. Remember? And even say to the buckler, remember me when you get there. But Joseph, if I remember you when you are 28 years, you're going to fail. A lot of you, you are not patient with God, but God knows what he's doing with your life. Can you imagine you, the way way you were like Reuben, unstable like water. If God had given you everything at that level, you'd have messed up the gospel. Some of you, that's why you are even brought to World Trade International so that we can teach you. This is another school because where you came, you were like water. You were just just flowing everywhere. You were just doing everything. Then you come and say, be stable. Look at your neighbor and say, I think I understand. <laughs> I think I understand. I think I understand why I am here. I think I, think I understand what's happening in my life. I think I understand why my, bro- my, boy- my boyfriend broke up. There are some people who are not worshiping God. Oh, why did God allow him to break my heart? Hey! You don't understand. You don't understand. What God is saving you from? You don't understand. God is not stupid. Look at your neighbor and give them high five and say, I'll trust in them. You see, when the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean upon your own understanding. Your problem is your own understanding. Your own understanding tells you that I've lost the money. Your own understanding tells you that I lost the opportunity to sleep with Mrs. Bodyfuck. Your own understanding, hey man, you talk. Understand, trust in the Lord and lean not upon your own understanding. It is your own understanding that makes you to sin when you are a child of God. Thank you, Minister, for that. Minister says your own understanding does not understand. It has reduced you, but yes, you are, you are just an ordinary man. When are you a fire carrier? When are you carried God? When you arrived as a small boy, that's why what's going to Pagamis. As a small boy, when you arrived, you're already far. You're telling your father, I saw the son. His father had never seen the son bow to him. 
the father didn't know that the son had knees. He only heard it from Joseph that the son can bow. The father only knows the son in the air, right there, up there. But on that day, the boy comes and says, Papa, I, I know the son has knees. The son can bow. Even, uh, even, even the moon can bow. And the father says, what are you talking about, young man? You are even saying my mother because I understand what you are talking. As much as you think you have seen something, but as your father, I understand more than you. Now, the problem is that the moment you see the sun, the sun, bow. You. You change the title. You change the title. You go around telling people, oh, uh, you know, at my church, you know, that church, they, they don't recognize gifts. They don't recognize anointing. The, the apostle is not seeing me. No, I'm seeing you very well. But I can also understand that you are still seeing things in pictures. How can you see me and your mother as the son? The father tells us, why you mean that me and you? Let me talk to you. I understand more than you do. I know that at the present moment I make you a pastor. So you need to grow, my boy. I understand. Some of you are like that blind man that Jesus prayed for. And then I open his eyes and then Jesus says to him, what can you see? Jesus didn't say, you are not seeing. He says, what can you see? He says, I see people, but they are like trees. If you had given that young man an axe, you would have cut everyone's head, thinking that they are trees. There are some people, they see things. He has got to help them to see further. I know you are anointed, but wait a little bit. You are not for you are not 30. In other words, it's not the number of 30 that matters. Somebody might actually say, I'm now 32 apostle. No, it's who you are in the things of the spirit. Because there are some people who are 50 years according to biology, but they are three months in the things of the spirit. They are still in diapers, they are messing themselves up. When I when I know how to you think you are five years old. In diapers. And then it's it you are leading. Ha, I need to conclude. I need to conclude. We go home. Give your number a high five and say, I think I understand my father. God wants to take you far. You are delaying God by not maturing. You are delaying God by fearing warfare. You are delaying God from running away from responsibility. Don't afraid of warfare. Don't be afraid of trouble. Don't be afraid of persecution. Don't be afraid to face it head on because it is your way for maturity. Now, let me just conclude it for you. Can we just let the Bible speak for itself? Then we close. Look at your neighbor and say, I think I now understand. I know there are people who are given, uh, you see, if you see anyone with three titles before their name, they are babies. If you are an apostle, you are an apostle. leave this young generation. <laughs> hey! It's not about titles. It's about life assignment. Do you know that when David killed Goliath, he was not even known by the king. The king had even to say, whose son is this? He had no name, but he had a weapon. The problem with you is that you don't even have the weapon. Now you have three names. You even want to leave the church because we have not given you a position. Okay, now we allow the Bible to speak on its own. Minister, stand up and we just read the Bible. Me, I'll preach the last two verses, but you are reading. 41, chapter 41. Chapter 41, from verse 39. We are closing, we are closing. 
chapter number 41, verse number 39. Yes. It reads and says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee the, all this. Uh, I think I jumped something. Uh, verse 14. 14. Yeah. Verse number 14. Yes. It reads and says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, uh -huh. and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. Listen, listen, listen to English. Pharaoh, my, my Bible says, and Pharaoh called for Joseph. Let me talk to you. As we are announcing a new season, there is a call for your name. Amen. I know for too long you thought you are, you, are, you, are, you are not known. There is a call. Your name has been mentioned in the hierarchy of spirits. Amen. Pharaoh called for Joseph. And they brought him quickly. Did you hear that? They were in a haste. That's what the Bible says. At the rapture speed. They chained him. He shaved. They dressed him up. He appeared in the same hour. He appeared before Pharaoh. In the same hour, he was already promoted. In the same hour, he was given control over the whole of Egypt. Let me tell you, what he suffered for, for close to 13 years, 12 to 13 years suffering, everything was, was summarized, condensed, compressed into hours. And his restoration was announced everywhere. Read. So, if you laughed at me, please can you swallow your saliva? Because what is going to happen is going to shock your life. You'll be going around telling people that you know me and people will beat you for that. They'll be asking if you know him, how did you remain behind? Read. We close, we go home. How many are ready to go home? <laughs> And go and talk to God. Verse number 15. Yes. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, uh -huh. I have had a dream, uh -huh. and there is no one who can interpret it. Did you hear? Let's stop there. Let's go to 39. You can read at home. So, even Pharaoh can dream. <laughs> this is the reason why, if Joseph had only left to face Pharaoh with the dreams, there was going to be a problem. There are people, when we preach here, they come and say, ah, but I'm in a dream. Uh, uh. Oh, we, we don't only dream like you. Let's go. Verse number 39. Yes. And Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Yes. For as much as God has showed you thee all this, yes. there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Hallelujah. Continue. Up to 46. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand. Okay, if, if you didn't understand English, Pharaoh is announcing to Joseph that from today you are ruling. I'm only a ceremonial leader. Decisions are made by you. So this is the reason why Joseph had to grow. Now when you can't even make a decision whether to pay your tithe or not, and you want to run nation. Read. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon uh, Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Ah, vala pela. Leo, you have a soft life. Vala exactly skew. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon... Listen, listen. To, he's giving him all power. He's giving a prisoner, an ex-convict, convict, somebody who was convicted for life, accused of rape. In, in a twinkling of an eye, Pharaoh is changing everything, taking his ring. He, he, he's, he's not even consulting. Uh, I, I, I don't know what, how you want me to announce your season. People will not consult. Some of them, they'll come and ask, why are you here? He say, I, I also don't know. I was told to be here. Are, are you trying to challenge the person who gave me the ring? Do you know what that ring meant? That ring meant wherever you step, if you step, that man must be killed by being cut into pieces, into means means. That's what they do. No one asks, answers, asks you why. This is the reason when, when Joseph now was, was, if you read the next, that are, the next scriptures that are coming, when his brothers came for food, I have no time for that. When his brothers came for food, he gave them food. 
and he returned the money inside. No one would ask him, he had a ring. Zwana, Baba. Zwana, can you imagine if Joseph had slept with my Potiphar? That ring, Baba, that ring. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to my teacher chef, my trader say. When I'm your salang, I own so salang or conza, oh conza, I do to you know, we are forced to our own concern, not to our own concerns. My sister, your ignorance is higher. Read, read. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand. I pray today. May you be authorized to transact in the realm of the spirit. Ah, I'm, uh, we are praying about this tomorrow. <laughs> May you be authorized to transact in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit, there are other guys who transact today. They only mention. They only speak. They don't make noise like we do. You understand? They don't sound drums in their vocals. No, they don't do that. It's us. Them, they just speak. This time tomorrow. When you are authorized to function in the realm of the spirit, you only speak things, you see them happen. But there is a price to pay. It's not every Jack and Jill that... If you look at some of the people, let me say it, I know I'm online. There are people who are putting rings there to go and buy those rings. They are rings of power. Because they know they messed up, they can't get the ring of the spirit. Some of them are belts. Let me say it. So that when they speak, things happen. You see, the problem with the fake thing, it is an expiry date. And there's something about a fake thing that does not sit well, even in your heart. You see, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, but there's something that does not, it does. All right, all right, just read. And put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen uh -huh. and put gold chain about his neck. And he met him. To haven't, haven't you seen these gold chains? <laughs> Let's keep going. And he met him to ride in the second chariot which he had. <laughs> He was made to ride in the second chariot that the king had. So, this demon you see of latest cars and latest whatever that we try to bring on people of God. Let me not finish. When you don't have it, you try to create it. But I pray for somebody today. God will cause you to ride in the chariots of heaven. Where even when you are seated here, you can be dining with spirits somewhere. I'm preaching here, but you are not here there. They, they, the chariots have taken you. You are somewhere that you are there with the Lord. When you are in a meeting with other people, while these others are making noise about this, but the chariots, they come take you and give you a strategy. And when you lift up your head, there is no one in the board meeting that can challenge what you are raising up. Let me tell you, we need more people in the marketplace than in church. We have anointed everyone a pastor in church. If you speak in tongues, you are a pastor. If, if you do, uh, we went to a certain church, they, they, they anointed more people to be pastors more than the church congregation they were leading. We need people of the spirits in board meeting. People who will be able to, to influence decisions over a city through the working of the Holy Spirit. We are tired of people who come and make noise in prayer, but we have no decisions that are made out there in the world. So I pray for everyone, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, at your workplace there, be an influence apostle. Wherever you are, be an influential apostle. I decree this because the world needs more administrators than the church. I close. Let's just go to 50, 50 to 52. We close. The other ones, I think I'll deal with that Monday, Friday. Give your neighbor a high five and say, Apostle, 
can we read? Wherever you are in business, be an apostle there. Wherever you are in football, be an apostle there. Represent heaven wherever you are. In music, right now we have all Christian musicians turning into secular because they think there is no, there is no influence in the, in the Christian music, in the uh, spiritual music. So they are trying to do the music of the world. We are praying in the name of Jesus that God raised a Joseph in that area who influenced the world. Back to God. Because we are not in ministry for money. Put it. Verse number 50. Yeah. Chapter number 41. Yeah. And Auntie Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, hey. which Esna, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bear unto him. Uh -huh. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said, oh, yeah, yeah. He has made me forget all my toil. Mm. And all my father's house. Uh -huh. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. Uh -huh. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy to somebody in the next two minutes. God is changing your story. And God is changing your environment and your surrounding. And your connections. Hallelujah. All of a sudden the Bible says Joseph was so blessed. And he had the first son. He said his name is Manasseh. My Bible says Manasseh means that God has blessed me. To such an extent that I cannot even remember my suffering. I want to talk to somebody that is here. I know we went through suffering. I know you went through trouble, but the compensation of God is going to be so much that you'll even forget that you were thrown in the pit. You went into prison. You were, you were sold out by Mrs. Potiphar through life. I pray no one will suffer for God and there is no compensation. Uh, he says my, his name is Manasseh. Oh, bless me so much that I have forgotten. Uh, you can still remember how they made you suffer. You have not been blessed. I pray the blessing of the Lord over your life. How that you will not even remember that they caused you to cry. You will not even remember that one day you were suffering. May the Lord bless you. I want you today when you go home, you look around what's happening in your life and just say Manasseh, Manasseh. Lord, you have blessed me that I can't even remember who is my enemy. You have blessed me that I can't even remember how I have suffered. I pray for you this very day. May God give you capital plus interest. May God give you compensation. And then the next one he says his name is Ephraim Ephraim means God you have made me fruitful in the land of my suffering the same area where you suffered may be fruitful may you be paid there I, I, I release fruitfulness in the house stand up in the name of Jesus you are be so fruitful that what others did hallelujah in 50 years you shall do in 5 days what others did in 50 years you shall do in 5 years Hallelujah. Some of you don't even believe it. We bought a building when we were 10 years. Huh? When World Wide was 10 years, we bought a building in the city. Lina Selia Shlek and Jugu Renovate. Do you know there are some ministries? I'm not saying this in pride, but in all humility. There are some who are 50 years, they don't have a building in the city center. I want to say when God is paying you back, you are not able to calculate what has happened in your life. I, because God has done it for the church, he must do it for you. I know that the family you come from, you struggle for everything. But it's not going to be like that for you from this very day. What took your father's years to do, you shall establish in days like Joseph. You shall just be saying, Manasseh Ephraim, Manasseh Ephraim. My God, you have blessed me so much that I cannot even revenge. You see, all people who revenge is a sign that you are not blessed. Ah, I am a harsh. The good Lord bless you. Whosoever is hearing us online, the good Lord bless you today. And may the good Lord keep you. May the good Lord protect you. May the good Lord increase you. May the good Lord multiply you. Wherever you are going, you must actually know it's your season to be manifested. Go take over the world. Go rule. Go manifest God in every area of your life. In Jesus' name, the good Lord bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus.